Once you reach the very end of the Elden Ring storyline, you will have to defeat Radagon, then the Elden Beast, which is the final boss. Once you complete that, you will be presented with the option to start Journey 2. What does this hold in store for us, though? I'm sure a lot of players are curious what they keep, what they lose. This is basically a wipeout of the story. You restart from scratch just like you did when you first loaded up Elden Ring. After the final boss, if you didn't start the journey immediately, you can go to the round table, interact with it, and you can select the second option from the bottom, Begin Journey 2. It will play the introduction cutscene like it did for the very first time it will spawn you inside the starting location we will now see what we kept and what we lost i was very curious about this myself when it comes to your items and your equipment you will keep absolutely everything the only thing that you lose is the great runes that you get from defeating the bosses all of your precious weapons your armor your summons and your spells will all stay with you the next thing that happens when you start journey 2 all of the bosses and enemies that you encounter in the world will have a little bit more damage and a little bit more health however it is not noticeable at all this right here is one of the main reasons why I decided to start journey 2. I am back in the infamous farming spot. However, instead of getting the regular amount of runes, you are going to get double the amount you normally would. Next up, the first thing you'll notice when you spawn in and pull out your map, you will notice that all of your grace checkpoints have disappeared and been wiped out. However, all of the important locations are still marked on the map. Your map pieces will still remain there. You won't have to pick those up. However, you're going to have to go to every grace and locate them one more time, just like you did in the first playthrough. Also, the churches that had sacred tears in them, they're going to respawn and you'll be able to pick them up one more time this will allow you to maximize the amount of fp and hp that your flasks replenish until you max out at level 12. if the sacred tears respawn it would only make sense that the golden seeds do as well this in fact is true and you can use these to level up the amount of flasks that you get another thing that gets wiped out when you start the second journey if you go to the twin maiden husks you will see that all of the bell bearings that you once had in the first playthrough will disappear this is something that you have to acquire one more time one of my favorite things about starting another playthrough is that all of the weapons inside chests will respawn as well including the sword of night and flame and any other one that you might find in the map this will allow you to have multiple and even dual wield them finally all of the bosses that you defeated and did not defeat in the first playthrough will respawn so you'll be able to tackle them from scratch i have to be 100 honest the second playthrough i am having a lot more fun since i have a pretty good understanding of this game being a first time souls player if you're curious if you should do this or not i would definitely recommend it before we wrap the video up i just want to say that any items that you might have locked yourself out of by either defeating the bosses of the area you'll be able to get them one more time this time properly thank you for taking the time to view my video if you enjoyed it and you would like to help me grow my channel drop a like and consider subscribing it helps out with the algorithm tons and until next time i'm out peace